In this episode of Dissect Lodash, we are going to take a look at the get function of Lodash. The episode is split into two parts. The first part is just a little overview of um, how to uh, use the get function and when to use it. So if you just want to uh, get started really fast and use it, then just watch the first part. And the second part, we're going to dive deep into the function and into the code base of Lodash to find out how the author actually implemented the function um, and make it work. Uh, okay, then let's go. So let's get into the example. What I have here is a little code sandbox file. I imported Lodash version 4.1715 and a little function that logs a little emoji. That's all. And I created two objects of two imaginary dogs called Heinrich and Jimmy. So what do we have here? Heinrich has four legs and a fur that is striped and has the colors red and blue. Jamie on the other side also has four legs and a fur that's only yellow, unicolor. So if we wanted to access the fur color of Heinrich, not the second one, the second fur color, the striped fur, then we would write this like this with normal property accesses. Heinrich dot fur dot striped dot color two. Like this. And now let's log this. And just to make it a bit more visible, I'll just run my custom log landmark function so we get this little emoji in the console. So here we see his first blue and here we get our confirmation. But what happens if we replace Heinrich with Jimmy? Let's do this. Oh, an error. Why? Because Jimmy doesn't have the fur striped property, so the striped property on fur. So JavaScript doesn't know what to do in this case. And therefore, if the striped property doesn't exist on fur, the striped is undefined, and it's trying to access color two on striped, yeah, results in this error. But what can we do? With the lodash get function, this would not have happened. Because, let's rewrite this with lodash get, lodash dot get, and let's pass Jimmy as the first parameter, and the path is the second parameter. So it's very similar to what we've written before. And yeah, as you can see, it now returns undefined instead of throwing an, an error. And the program actually continues to run, as we see here. The log landmark actually logs this little check marks uh, sign. But the thing is, it doesn't really help if, if, if it just returns undefined. But what we can do now is actually influence how the program will handle this sort of problem. And what we can do is provide a default value in case this path leads to nowhere or to undefined. And in this case, I would just expect that every dog has at least the fur property and that we want the fur property if there's no special striped color to path. So what we do is we just say Jamie dot fur is dot fur is the default value. And like this, we will get 
the correct value. Now if we now replace Heinrich, uh, Jamie with Heinrich, it will give the correct result as well. That's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, so should you always use this? I would say no, because I don't think it's actually worth introducing this extra code if you don't need the safety um, of the loadish get function. But there are cases where it's very, very useful. And these are the ones when your objects are not like a hundred percent the same every single case. So similar to this case I have made here with Heinrich and Jimmy having sort of a different structure uh, regarding the fur. Mm, that really makes sense because then I can prevent any fatal errors in my application which would stop the application from running. And if you know for certain that your objects that you're trying to access always have the same structure and always look the same, then I would not use get in these cases. So I hope we have a good overview now of how get works. And next we will dive deep into the loader uh, sh get code base and see how it works. So let's dive deep into the loadash get function. So what we see here is um, a local copy of the loadash library. I have opened the get.js which contains the get function. What we see up here is just some documentation that you can also find on the website of Lodash and down here is our actual function. So what happens here? Um, it's basically it works like this. If the object that you pass in is null then it will just um, assign undefined to the result and if the result equals undefined then it will return the default value. In the other case if the object is not null, um, the get function will run the base get function with the parameters you've provided and return this result and assign it to the result constant. Then, as the result constant is usually not undefined, if you pass something into base get, um, you will return the result from the get function. So what is this base get? Let's take a look. The base get function creates a array based path from your string based path. So if you have, for example, um, fur dot uh, striped dot color one, like in the case of our Heinrich dog, like this one, then the path variable right here would be reassigned with an array that says fur striped color one. So down here we are iterating over the path array that we've created up here and with every iteration we are drilling deeper into the object that we provided to get the actual value that we're looking for. Okay, so to make this clear, I'll just show you what the object basically contains every time um, the while loop runs. So in the beginning, the object is this thing up here. And in the second iteration, we access the object with the fur key, so we get this striped object. So object contains striped um, color one and so on. In the next iteration we will get this object. 
so the content of Stripe basically. And in the third iteration, we will get color one. So we only get this here. And then we basically at our destination, we have arrived. So what happens next is um, they're checking if the index exists and the index equals the length and which is usually the case because the while loop stops if the index is smaller uh, doesn't stop until the in index is smaller than the length of the um, path array and if that's the case then the object gets returned if it's not the case it will return undefined. All right. So, in fact, base get can return undefined, but then the default value will just be returned. Mm, yeah. That's the basics of this. And if we want to dive deeper into the cast path function, for example, then we see here um, what it's doing is if we are passing an array as our path variable then it will just return the array and if the value that we've provided so the path string um, is a single key I would say so something like we just pass fur into it or um or brackets zero um whatever then it will just return this specific value as an array and in the other case, if it's sort of a real path with, with multiple levels, then it will return the return value of string to path. So we will paste or pass our value into string to path, and string to path converts a string to a property path array. And that's usually the end result. Um, that we've seen right here that cast path returns yeah and what else do we have here yeah that's basically it what's really interesting is what happens if we pass some object to the get function that doesn't have the right properties to actually apply the path to. And this is the case with the Jimmy object that we've used before. And here, for example, if we continue to use the, the path fur striped color on this one, we would get um, an error because it would try to access fur on Jimmy, which works, it's yellow. And then it would try to access striped on yellow and that returns undefined. And then it would try to access color one on undefined, then the application would break. But uh, the get function is taking a smart route and it's doing it a bit differently. Um, what they're doing is they have this while loop down here where they're iterating over the path array and this while loop has two conditions. If one of these conditions is false, then the whole um, condition evaluates to false and therefore the while loop stops. And to sort of run it through um, and to also visualize it, 
Um, I will do the same as I've done before and write down the states of the object and how it's actually been accessed. So as I said before, in the beginning, it is the Jimmy object as expected. And if we then access um, uh, fur in the second condition, as in the second iteration, then we get yellow as a result. And then we try to access the striped property on yellow, and then we get undefined. And at that point, the while loop stops because object is now undefined and this condition checks if the object is unequals to null but not with a strict check so I need some proof if I say undefined equals null That's true. And if we say undefined triple equals null, that's false. So we're making sort of a um, a double equals check right here for nullish values or for falsy values, and therefore this will evaluate to false as soon as the object is undefined and then like I said the loop would stop and we will go down here and then it will check if the index equals the length which basically proves that the path has successfully been walked by the program and if it hasn't then it will return undefined and in the other case it will just return the object yeah that's basically all the magic behind the get function mm -hmm.